Welcome back to Range Anxiety TV for another one of our hoist sessions and I'm the guy with the tool in my hand standing next to, I don't know how to describe you. Let's just get rid of that tool out of your hand for starters. <laughs> it's me. Hey world. Hey Marty. Hey babe. Hey babe. We're back here with another EV on the hoists. This is a special one, this one. Isn't one of it? my favourites. And yeah. what does this and that have in common? Both have the same power to weight ratio. This is a blower. <laughs> Neither of them suck. The leaf is one of my favourite. Actually, cut this down. It's a bit big. There you go. Not used to hanging on to something. <laughs> um, the leaf is one of my favourite cars. This car was actually given to us here at, at Powertech um, to do some development work on. But the first thing I had to do was kill it and kill a battery system in it. And I've been trying now for 18 months and it will not raise a sweat. It will not whimper. It just does everything perfectly. And it's quite nearly, a nearly everything perfectly. Its range has started to no. appreciate. No, no. So it's, it was terrible to start with. You've got no range. Like yeah. this, this, this was the first, this is like a GDR in some yeah. ways. First came out in 12, I reckon, or 11, the first leaf and the design hasn't really changed since. Uh, there was one major upgrade in 18, the AZ1. This is the AZ0, but 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, <laughs> which is a bit like my bike. Four of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is, <laughs> and that's, it's, yeah. it's not great, is it? You must admit, this is one of them ones where, I know you went and picked up something recently, <laughs> <laughs> a dog, and you had to plan out the whole drive. Then you spent days doing research. The thing, the thing about EVs is any of them, you've got to have military grade logistics <laughs> on any trip. And this one in particular, because it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit of a liar. It's got about 200 k's potential range, but it depends, <laughs> which is actually about 150 if you turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> and then if you point it up a hill, it's about 100. Oh, yeah. Or if you use more than half throttle, it's about 80. So. Yeah, you, you kind of don't want to be on the freeway in it for too long, because at 110, it eats a lot of grunt. So what is it that you like about it then? Everything. I mean, apart from the custom number plate, envy for you, oh, Martin no. loves that. I do. Yeah. And I think there's a race somewhere, something sticker. Yeah, up we'll on go it. over the stickers in a minute, but I get a lot of compliments on my leaf. Yeah. And from... no one, or no one, and no one actually wants to borrow it off you, drive it, come wrong for a lift anywhere in it, be seen in it. That's including his wife, by the way. Oh, yeah, she hates it. But she drives a <laughs> TJ Wrangler. What can I say? Yeah, um, yeah. But if we look at the engineering of this car, there are some marvels in it that Carlos put in it from Nissan. Um, you know, Carlos was also what Alan named the baby in The Hangover. Carlos. <laughs> yeah. right? Carlos from Nissan yes. before he was smuggled out in the music case. Put a lot. Yeah. And Red Bull mm. Racing... F1 had a little bit to do with it, with their allegiance with Nissan and Infinity at one stage. And when we go underneath it right now, I'll You'll put down my why. tool and I'll show you why. Now, bear with me for a moment, Paul. I said I believe this car's got a bit of F1 influence in it. What was I, what was I talking about? And you, you made a comment off camera. Two words, Adrian Newey, you reckon? And this under tray. Personally, diffuser off camera i said boring as that and what did i come back with oh, i was wrong <laughs> you no, said i would I never make an f1 engineer engineer well let's have a look at it for a moment back to the camera <laughs> let's have a look at it for a moment this is a proper downforce generating diffuser it has vortices around the front wheels to deflect air away from mm. the wheels yep. it's, it uh, it's got cooling knacker ducts in it, it's just a level of engineering that is better than the under tray and more thorough and more aerodynamically developed than you'll find in a Nismo GTR has been put in to the leaf. Why is that? I, I beg to differ. There's there's a couple of things. On. There's a couple of things going Look, on here. It, poorly designed battery cooling system. Well, when I say poorly, none. Do you say that about Porsches? They had a poorly designed cooling <laughs> system because it was air cooled, and it was the 50s and 60s. This thing. That's just a bit of a letdown, I reckon. So it's done so that it can allow a little bit of air around those batteries because they get hot. We all know how these things burn to the ground relentlessly. 
And yeah. the other thing is the um, the Did Donald aero. Trump tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you see it on the news weekly. Well, there you uh, go. The, the aero underneath here is just to get that drag coefficient down to try and get that 200 kilometre range <laughs> up around 201. There is quite a burgeon. These are not cheap anymore. These used to be quite cheap. You could get them for um, 12, 13 grand second hand. Not obviously not a late model one like this, a 17 model. I just went on car sales. What's the cheapest one on the market in Australia right now? Oh, oh I reckon it'd probably go by whatever the spot price is for lithium. <laughs> <laughs> That's 19 grand. 19 the grand. One and going up from there. Yeah, okay. What's a brand new one worth with the facelifted body? Probably 60 or yeah, something. Yeah, around that. Yeah. yeah. The, so it's, it's frighteningly like, do you, expensive. Do you want a Model 3? It's got a bigger battery too. Do you want a Model 3 that will last pretty much forever and will do 500 k's to a charge? Or do you want a Leaf for the same money? <laughs> it's a toss-up, isn't it? Yeah. But, all those Nismo but it comes with the F1 street cred you've been talking but about. But there is also a Nismo version of this. You do know that, of the latest Yes, series. I have seen that. And that's just purely a sticker effort, is it? Is there is there anything Nismo about that? Thing? Well, it depends. If you listen to Nissan, no, there isn't. It's just a sticker job. and a. But Ooh. some of the people that are advertising them secondhand have bes say they have bespoke race tunes in them they from know Nissimo. what they've got they know what they've got <laughs> so no swapping it for a set of uh 185 tires and an xbox <laughs> they worth that people are asking the 70 grand for second hand nismos yeah yeah covid was a strange time oh, i know and it's messed with some people's <laughs> heads terribly but right let's go and have a look under the hood <laughs> And here we are back around the front of the leaf. And there's a few things about this. It is, some describe it as a face only a mother could love, but I go back to its F1 ancestry. And I'm looking at headlights that are designed to streamline air over the mirrors. There's a lot of thought gone into this thing, and that's why it's functionally beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> functionally being the key word, because dang, it's ugly. And that's how you feed it, through there. Yep. You can either, it's got a Type 1 connector or a Chatamo connector, which means it can charge at a maximum of 50 kilowatt hour. It's, it's pretty slow. Bad. So it's bad or worse? They're your two options? Yeah. And um, I want to have a look under the frunk. Well, we will in a second, but remember, this is, these are so bad, they're cool now. These are the Polaroid camera of cars. Like, you know, like, it, it's just almost rolling art. It's almost carby fed, isn't it, really? No, it's an EV pole. <laughs> yeah, but if it was a... Yeah, I get it. It's, the, it, it's the dinosaur EV, though. It's the EV that the French designed, essentially, yep. through the Nissan Renault Alliance. Yep. So like, much like a Citroen 2CV, it's going to gain a lot of popularity, and these will become a collector's car one day. Yeah, like stamps, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Lick them and stick them. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon. You've got to collect them all, but Let, some of them... <laughs> let's have a look at Let's have a look at them yeah. under the front. On, on that... Yeah, yeah. This this is where the um the engine and everything stored. But just watch out for spiders, people. This this doesn't come up very often, does it, Martin? No, well it doesn't. For it's an EV, what? and as I explained to you off camera, and you're now blocking the view of me. Oh, all of, all of all the listeners, all of the viewers will be. You know, <laughs> that are now listeners. That are now listeners. Um, bugs love EVs <laughs> because they don't stink of oil, fuel. They don't, you know. Cars stink as a rule. Under here, there's oil and grease and everything else. In an EV, there's just harmony it's and just butterflies. It's just a bug zapper, people. They're attracted to the blue light and they get zapped. <laughs> and because of all the there. butterflies under the bonnet, the spider's moving. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I've got a really nice nest of spiders in here that yep. I've been feeding and cultivating for many years now. Mm. Mm. And they tend to love the, the whir and the pedestrian warning signs that the leaf gives off. And people do say, have you got a wheel-bearing problem, mate, as a car goes, when yeah. you're driving it to warn people you're coming. Yeah. Not like a Tesla, it just runs you over and kills you. Exactly. So yeah. it's really more of an environmental asset than a, more of a, what do they call that? More of a feature than a fault. And did you, <laughs> did you notice that this has bright orange cables as well, the EV standard for high voltage? Yeah, yep. so you enlightened me on that one last week. Yeah, so now you know, you don't mess, you don't cut the big orange ones, you could get a zap. And what are we looking at? What, what on is earth that? Is it? it looks like a 6L80 transmission upside down. <laughs> yeah, that should that would be your high voltage inverter, I imagine. Right. So that's turning your DC and your batteries into AC and controlling the current flow into the power unit itself. So the motor itself is down there, right? And this is like the power electronics at the top here, look, with a layer of dirt on it. And oh look, there's a little family of worms, mill worms that are moving <laughs> in there. Um, 
<clears throat> but you see it's all very clean it doesn't leak any oil there is oil in this like a tesla um and there is some coolant i don't know what it's actually for it's it doesn't cool the batteries <clears throat> does it on this one what is the probably for the heater uh no nah, it's a resistive heater i don't know what the coolant's for but it Oh, I'm going to do some research on that one. Yeah, no, there's, it must be for something to do with the air conditioner systems. It's got big fans on the radiators too. I don't know. It might, may run actually, uh, sorry, it probably runs coolant through the through the inverter and the power electronics to keep them cool, just not the batteries. Sorry, I was, I was just off at the fairies today. But yeah, it's like you walk up to a car show and you leave and you pop your hood. Has anyone ever said that before? Rock up to a car show in your uh, life? There is that old Japan day and there will be some leafs there, I guarantee really? you. Really? Yeah, well the bloke that organises it imports them, so he'll have them there probably for sale. <laughs> but you rock up to a car show or a, you know, like a cars and coffee. You pop your hood and you show off your donk. <laughs> you know, and that that's kind of what leaf leaf inspiration is. Yeah. They're a good car, they have no range, but they're retro cool in a way, and they're packed full of F1 engineering. You name me another car, EV or not, that's got all of that going for it. Oh, I don't think it's got anything going for it at this stage. Well, well, you still haven't sold me on this car. It's infinitely more reliable than any GDR ever built. Wow. It's got a longer range than an R35. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though, maybe, they, maybe even though they will go like 400 k's on a full <laughs> tank, you try yeah. and get one to like do a full to tank without that. exploding. Yeah, I get yeah. that. I get that. But um, there's just something about it. It's just, it screams to me like, keep walking. Really? You know, yeah, when I see it. Is that because you're like a, a bogan? I don't know what it is, but it's just one of these cars that just doesn't grab me at all. There's nothing I like about it. What about when it runs a 12 second pass, a high 12? Will you like it more then? I will. I want to see this. I've been talking about <laughs> it for a long time. You now. have been talking about it. And the reason I haven't done the tuning on the inverter is you've got to solder like 30 or 40 wires to the circuit board to do it. And I'm getting a bit old and the eyes are getting a bit old and I'm soldering. But you know what? I've just got to get it done. You do, because that's when you're in your zone. Well, they did ask me to destroy this car. Yep. So yep. I think me modifying it, it tends to work on most other cars. <laughs> yeah. um, Look what you've done to we'll most of the things around here. But what I need you to do, my wonderful viewers, or our wonderful viewers, is to shoot us a comment down below and tell <laughs> us um, what you like about Leafs and how all the booger eaters out there that hate Leafs, there, there's yeah. something wrong with them. And the best comment, if you're an Adelaide and if you're in South Australia, or if you're willing to travel, can come to a Cars and Coffee with us, both of us in the Leaf. Yeah. I'll bring the men in blacks. <laughs> you won't remember a thing. Thank you once more for listening to Range Anxiety, people. Babe.